everyone, and thank you so much for watching another episode of The Emmanuel Show. Today is one of those days where I want you guys to watch and tune in and listen to another side of the spectrum that you guys may not have been privy to. I had, an, I had an opportunity to meet this gentleman at my last taping when we were filming a bunch of interviews. And I was introduced to him personally that day. However, we were communicating through Facebook. And the things that he was able to tell me about life and understanding your journey through life is nothing short of amazing. So I want you guys to get to know him as well as I have and soak in some of the information and maybe you'll learn something. So I want to introduce to you all Mr. Craig Blackmore. Hello. 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 How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's a rainy day out here, but we're still making the best of it. Oh, yeah. We just gonna I'm gonna dive straight into it. Who is Craig Blackmore? How would someone describe you? Oh uh, well, simply put, I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what people would say around that, but I feel like I'm an artist. Mm -hmm. So many different types, uh, limitless. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit of everything. Music, photography, video, uh, 3D, animations, mm -hmm. glitch art, a lot of different things. So. Okay. When we talked about you, you know, your interview and you coming onto the show, you really... Um, sparked my interest when you started talking about life and living the best of it and understand uh, understanding your role in life. Um, I want you to start there. What is the biggest misconception that people have about their life and how to live it and how to be their best self? Well, there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of big ones, but one of the big ones is uh, people believe they have a purpose. Uh, I don't think anyone has a purpose. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has potential. So people have specific potential, potential to do specific things. But so you, well, uh, let me cut you off here. You don't think that nobody had, you don't, they don't have, you don't have a purpose in life. No. No. Wow. One has a purpose. So that means you think that everything we do is for nothing. No, not true. Not okay, true. Okay. Now, see, you have potential to live a life with a lot of meaning. Okay, your life, in the end of it, could have had so much purpose. You could believe, uh, you could have a solid vision that you want to go towards, that you want to make a reality. But if, when you look at it like this is what you're meant to do, now you're filling, you're building up walls for all kind of stress. You're setting all kind of boundaries that you don't even know exist yet. Simply because you think this is your direction. You know, there's a lot of people who thought they were going to be a doctor or a lawyer when they were 16, but mm -hmm. when at 30, they end up being a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be anything that they want to be or that they end up being, but there's a lot of people who end up giving up because they think it's supposed to be this way. They think this is what I'm meant to do. This is it. And because my life isn't set up like this, because I'm not good at it, because people don't think I'm good at it, I'm gonna give up. So you're you're taking the approach for you're taking the theoretical approach in terms of your feeling while you're in something or doing something. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school and studied fashion design. Mm -hmm. Here I am, a talk show host, which is completely you know opposite sides of the spectrum. You know, journalism and fashion design. However. Um, when you say the purpose and your feeling of giving up, you're referring to the actual action of giving up and, and according to what you think your purpose is. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if I believed in myself a long time ago in relation to doing a said thing and I'm successful in it, then that would be, of course, the opposite of what you're referring to, that I am meant to do that certain thing if it goes in that direction. Right. Okay. That could work too, but... The whole thing is you, you got to look at it as a way. There's, there's a difference between believing that something is meant to fall into place for you, that you're supposed to be in a position, mm -hmm. and then believing that you can make something you want happen. Mm -hmm. So if you're focused, if you're 10 years old and you're focused on being a designer, mm -hmm. and your whole life all you can think about is your success as that designer, then you could be that designer. Mm -hmm. But if anything happens to stop that, is that all you were? Is that all you believe that you were supposed to be? Was that designer? Mm -hmm. Was that one thing? Is that your purpose? Do you think that was your purpose? And if you do, it could play out anyway. It could play mm -hmm. out, you know, it didn't work out, but I can do this, or I failed, and now I just have to live, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but that failure comes in in the fact that they've given up. Exactly, that's the thing too. So, mm -hmm. and in reality, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. It's all in your mind. There's no 
Absolute. You know, I I say, yeah, mm -hmm. you don't have a purpose, you have potential, but someone else could justify exactly why we all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, in my situation, my case, and for my friends and everyone I talk to about this, it... One thing that I run into a lot, especially in the creative community, is a lot of people who feel like they aren't where they should be. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, who says you should be there? Like, where is this rule? Well, that could be, that can be the conception of where they picture themselves to be at this exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah, so they, I guess, from our parents' perspective, they built up, you know, by the time my mother was 32, she was already married with kids and she had her career going for her mm -hmm. on the, and, but she was, she's not an artist mm -hmm. on that particular spectrum. When people say that they're not where they're supposed to be or, or where they envision themselves, that is, I think that's, that came from the conception of where they pictured themselves. Right. And how, do, how does one get out of that? You need to live now. That's the main thing. A lot of people say, live in the moment, but mm -hmm. what does that really mean? It's actually pretty simple when you start to live in the moment. It, a lot of people are hung up on yesterday, on last month, on things from back then, and mm -hmm. they're hung up on the future. And neither of those things exist. Now, if someone was constantly running through this room from a boogeyman that you couldn't see, then mm -hmm. we'd all think they're crazy, right? Because it's not there, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You're running from a future or a past mm -hmm. that no one can see, no one experience, that ex exists in your mind because you put it in your mind or you are bringing it to the forefront of your mind. Mm -hmm. But if you allow it to hold you up today, then you're being held back by something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So you really need to practice living right now, the experience right now. Mm -hmm. So if, if, let's just take me for an example. If I if I didn't, if I personally didn't understand how to live for now, mm -hmm. describe to me how to live for now. Like, what should I do today to live for now? Well, appreciate the day for one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think this is a pretty bad day because it's not very sunny. And, mm -hmm. You know, the sky's gray. It's rain everywhere. But this is just today. This is how today is. You mm -hmm. know. So, if this stops your day or changes your day, then changes your day but for me this is just an addition to my day mm -hmm. I didn't know how the day was going to look I didn't look at the weather so I didn't plan for that mm -hmm. and because of that this isn't stunting my day this isn't making my day worse this is just how the day is so I'm going to take it as that mm -hmm. um, this our interview today mm -hmm. it could go any way mm -hmm. I have no expectations I don't expect it to go any particular mm -hmm. way so I can't be let down at all Mm -hmm. You can't let me down. So don't have any expectation as to the exact task mm -hmm. or the, the, the memo for, for the moment. Just go through it. Exactly. Experience okay. it. Ride the wave. That's what I always say. Just ride the wave. Okay. Now, there's some things you've got to have expectations for. Mm -hmm. like you know how the shows are ran. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know you, there's things that need to stay in order. Right. But, um, but for day-to-day -day life, there's so many people who stress out over mm -hmm. things that you don't need to stress out. I personally had to learn that um, today is a rainy day, and as you know, the majority of these interviews that I'm doing, they're very, very short-lived, and so we schedule so many in a day. Mm -hmm. um, today alone, I had eight cancellations for interviews today, and now I have to go and schedule another day, which was unnecessarily um, unnecessary for, or on my end, but it's extra work that I have to do. But I'm not mad about it. It's just I can't do nothing about it. Right, exactly. Like, what do you do when you can't do nothing about it? So I completely understand that concept. Yeah. Explain the concept of happiness okay. to me. Um, I see myself happy um, doing this mm -hmm. day in and day out. Although it can be stressful and although I want, I, I have a certain level of achievement that I want to achieve. How, what is happiness? And how, how would a person that have never experienced happiness experience it? It's a good question. I feel like happiness is kind of a state of being in a way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been minimized to a simple emotion, or it's actually it's been minimized to an emoji, you know, mm -hmm. a happy face. But that's, that's so surface level, you know, you could be happy without ever smiling. Mm -hmm. It's all about the state of your mind. I feel like uh, a happy mind is one where the chaos is calm. 
there's always going to be some chaos up here because you're always thinking a lot of different things. But when mm -hmm. it's even, when it's calm, when you can just wake up, take a deep breath, and enjoy the coffee, and ride to where you got to go, and there's no nothing weighing you down, there's nothing bothering you, that's pretty close to happiness, mm -hmm. I think. You know what I mean? You could be ecstatic about something, but that's always periodic. Mm -hmm. But you can have that feeling of that calm chaos for weeks and mm -hmm. months, and it can affect your life in so many different ways, positive ways, simply mm -hmm. because your head is calm, your emotions are calm, it's leveled. So I actually feel like happiness starts with being very leveled, very even, mm -hmm. in such a chaotic, emotional world, you know? So if you could get your balance, then that might be happiness that can evolve into something bigger. Mm -hmm. It can evolve into you being ecstatic. Okay. But I feel like that's happiness. Is, okay. Being all right with things. Being all right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, everything's all right. That's, okay. Yeah. I get that. I think. I think the way you articulated that was perfect. Now, on the opposite side of happiness, um, there is a level of sadness, um, and and people don't understand the. If they don't understand the happiness, they don't understand the sadness. If they don't understand the sadness, there is a limited life. There's a limited notion of just human emotion, and that we all go through it. Differentiate the, the sadness that a person feels and the weight of the sadness that can extenuate because I think this is where depression sets in. Oh, yeah. I understand the concept of depression and the sadness that, that can lay over your life, mm -hmm. but lots of people don't understand it or can, can grasp the concept. Mm -hmm. Can you describe sadness? Sadness is kind of like if you're, drive, you're driving down a road, right, and you see, you're going to get some pizza, let's do that as a metaphor, there's a pizza spot you love and it's a mile down the road, and this road for some reason has these giant gaps in it mm -hmm. that you can't jump across no matter how you think about it. You can't figure out how to get across these gaps, and as soon as you get across one, there's more that you didn't see there. Or simply, you just want to get some pizza, but this simple task, or not simple, these, these um, what's the obstacles are stopping you from doing that simple task. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like sadness. It's kind of like depression. You just want to take a shower, go to work, and get your day over with, but mm -hmm. you can't. You can't do these regular simple things because there's these obstacles that you didn't even see were there. They're emotion obstacles. No one else can see them. Mm -hmm. It could be memories. It could be thoughts. It could be feelings. There's some type of gap. There's some type of emptiness there that's constantly going to come and just be heavy when you don't want it to be. Mm -hmm. And the second you forget about it, something's going to remind you about it. No, no, no. That's sadness. That's depression. And it's very hard to shake because you don't really know what it is sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when you tell other people, mm -hmm. you're speaking like you're thinking. So there's back to that mental chaos. No one wants to hear that. Right. Their mind's already gone nuts. Mm -hmm. So they don't, you know, it's, so it's hard to talk to people about it. It's hard to figure it out. Mm -hmm. It's hard to fix it yourself. And that, that's depression. It's just that thing. It's stopping you from doing simple things. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's going to stop you from doing bigger things because you can't get through the day. Right. You know? And you never see them coming. You know, you never see these guys yeah. coming. But they're there. And yeah. You know they're there, too. That's another bad part. Mm -hmm. It's not knowing you're it's depressed. It's getting through it and understanding that there is something that's going to come to make you sad. Mm -hmm. I get it. When we spoke in your pre-interview, you spoke about death mm -hmm. and the concept that there is no death. Mm -hmm. What you got to have to explain it to me because somebody who just lost a very, very dear, uh, dear family member, um, I beg to differ. There's a death. There, yeah. I, we just lost someone. Okay. Um, how like, you could have just explained that concept of death. Okay. So death. I'm going to go back to the past and the future. Okay. Right? So the idea of that, if I am weighed down by my past or my future, then I'm weighed down by something that I'm not currently experiencing and that doesn't exist to anyone other than myself in mm -hmm. my mind. Death. I used to have a fear of death, a horrible fear of death that mm -hmm. would just stop me what I'm doing and just make me think like, mm -hmm. Will you know about it? Will it just happen? What's gonna What's it gonna be about? And that led me to read things uh, on the internet about like uh, the elderly people. Mm -hmm. How do they think about that? I never really thought about that. You know, here's the people who've been here for 50, 60, 70 years mm -hmm. alive, and they know 
there's not going to be another 50 years. They know this. You know, it's, a, it's like pending doom. It's a gap in the road. It's there, but they don't know when it is. Mm -hmm. But is it really a gap? Do they experience it? Is it just a thing that happens that they don't really predict? They don't really know. The only time they really know is if they're in a the hospital bed. Mm -hmm. But there's cases where it's just like death in your sleep or death in a sudden moment that you can't even think about. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you are worried about something like death and you're worried about something that you're not even sure you will experience personally on a mental level, it's not something, there, there are people who have those near-death experiences and they talk about what they've seen and what they felt and a lot of them align, but no one really knows what happens during that. The only person who really experiences death is someone else, not the individual going through it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's how I come down to the idea that death doesn't really exist because it's like, uh, like watching a TV show. Mm -hmm. Breaking Bad, for example, everyone, most people know what that is. Mm -hmm. Heisenberg doesn't exist. You know, none of that situation in that show really exists. It might be based off of reality, but none of that is real. You know, it exists on a medium, on the television, on the computer, mm -hmm. but it's not really there. The only people who know about it, like we know about it, are the observers who watched it happen. Those actors do not see that mm -hmm. the same way we see it. They don't see that as a real situation. We can be taken away into it as a real situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe they did when they were acting, but everyone who dealt with the production of that see this, this project, mm -hmm. this product, and we see it as an experience just like that. You know, the person going through it, you don't really know what they experience, mm -hmm. but everyone else sees it as this thing. It's death, it's sad, we lost this person, mm -hmm. and we're crying now. And I feel like it's, a, it's something like religion. You know, they looked at it, they thought about it, and they're like, well, we don't know what they're going through. So they say, even at funerals, it's funerals are for the people, not for the deceased, because they're not experiencing that. And that's literally what death, the whole concept of it is. It's something for us to understand that period mm -hmm. as much as we can. You know? okay. So that's, that's how I see it. I don't fear death because who knows if I'll even experience it. It might just be like sneezing. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows? Okay. So. Okay, so we, my producer are getting ready to wrap me up. So I, just have, I have one question for you. Um, within our conversation today, we, we spoke about emotion and, and the human psyche and how we, got, how we get to certain emotions and how we, how we deal with it all. My final question, line of question, and pack of questions, I should say. <laughs> um, how did we get this way? How did we, as a human race, get to be this entangled with our emotions and not understanding the, or grasping the concept of how we get so entrenched with our emotions and we let the, all these emotions take hold? Whether they are happiness, sadness, death, growth, reality, understanding what's real and what's not. How do we get here? How did we get here? Well... We got here. We're complex creatures. All of all of the living things on this planet are really complex, mm -hmm. but humans specifically are very complex creatures uh -huh. because we feel so much, we experience so much, and we can study and understand so many different things. But I feel like if it was a long time ago when the idea of death, happiness, all these things were trying to be figured out, they had villages had chiefs and priests and ministers who we're supposed to think about this type of stuff, research this kind of thing, and explain it. And as time goes on, the explanation changes, which could be problematic as people evolve. So now we have buildings and institutions that are set up with a defined idea of how each person is supposed to live life, and how they're supposed to experience their day, how they're supposed to think. How your coffee is supposed to taste. The advertisement is showing you how you're supposed to think it tastes. And we live in a society where we no longer have to explore these things ourselves. Mm -hmm. We just follow the schedule mm -hmm. and it'll be explained to us all our lives. And everyone isn't the same. Everyone's mind doesn't run the same way. Mm -hmm. Everyone, this could also stem to things like depression and anxiety. Everyone needs to find the way things work for them. And from the second you're able to speak to, well, for the rest of your life, you're, you're institutionalized and the thing that's going to carve you into what you're, you think you're supposed to be. What they're going to tell you what you're 
purpose is. They're going to tell you what your potential is geared towards. They're going to tell you what you believe. They're going to tell you all the questions you have no answers for. What happens after life? There's 50 different answers for it that can't really be proven. Well, how do we get here? There's thousands and thousands of answers for it that some could kind of be supported, but none can really be like set as this is how it happened, you know? And we are very connected people, you know? You can feel when someone's in the room with you, even if you don't see them. We mm -hmm. have that connection. Energy. Exactly. So we're walking through this society that's chiseled up for us, trying to connect the things that have been taught to not connect to each mm -hmm. other. They've been taught to refer to your manager or your pastor or your therapist before you ask another person mm -hmm. who's experiencing the same thoughts and feelings. You feel like you're alone in a, pla a planet with billions of people. It's just weird. Why does anyone feel alone? And that is because everyone's trying to figure out this thing. They're trying to get some order to this because they haven't been able to explore it, you know? Mm -hmm. There's the, the term finding yourself. You know, everyone needs to find themselves, and there's a lot of people who go through life without ever finding themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's what that is, you know? You see people who are troubled in development years that run away from home when they're 20 and come back absolutely fine and perfect than they've ever been mm -hmm. because they needed to break away from every boundary and feel all the regions of life mm -hmm. to understand some things. And most people don't get that ability. You so know? that's how. Exactly. That's, that's what creates all this depression, all this anger, all this chaos in here. It, and another thing too about chaos, chaos isn't a bad thing mm -hmm. either. Chaos is a good thing in some cases. Mm -hmm. But it's bad when it's attempted to be contained. So it's like... You have a society that's trying to stir things up in little regions of this society. And everyone's not aware of this. So you have all these different thoughts that are bouncing all over the place. But they have walls that they bounce off of. And then that, you know, each person is a little bubble of chaos that's trying to interact with each other. But they've been limited. All their chaos is limited when good chaos is free. You know, it goes how it goes. But then you have people like... Uh, like punks or like sports or graffiti artists or people without these boundaries who come up and paint on your pretty wall or do whatever you think is supposed to be in order, they're going to bring chaos to that. They're going to shake things up. And that chaos brings out new ideas from other people. You know, that release, that, that breaking of that organization's peace mm -hmm. is another person's way of expressing themselves and breaking a boundary that once could have caused them some issues. You know, and people don't see it like that. We have laws that we know, so we don't have to think about why someone did what they did. We just tell on them and let the system deal with them like a computer deals with a file, you know. But that's, that's inhumane. It's not human. All these things remove that human element, so we don't handle things. We don't handle chaos. We don't handle a chaotic mind. We don't handle a busy mind. We don't handle a concerned mind like a human. We handle it like a file, you know, like a system handles a file, you know. And none of that's natural. None of it feels natural. There's no reason a person should have to pay hundreds of dollars an hour to have someone listen to them. You know, to have someone just listen to what's going on in here. It, it, that shouldn't be the case, you know. You shouldn't have to look so hard for someone to trust. But you do. Because your enemies are being developed in the classroom next door. <laughs> you know? Wow. So, and you live in that. You live in that every day. Having to think a little bit about that in different ways. So, yeah, that's why people feel the way they feel. is because they can't feel. <laughs> It's illegal to feel. <laughs> and that that and that will be the end of our episode. That was that was real deep. I want you to come back okay. and we're gonna do a longer episode because that was some real good teaching. I personally just learned a couple of things like your enemy is developed next door because of the, the teaching and what what's occurring. Like this is good. This is good stuff. Um, especially speaking for somebody who used to have a problem with his emotions and trying to express myself in, in, in the way that I'm able to keep my individuality and doing the same thing. 
Um, but thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for watching the Emanuel Show. You can find this particular episode on online www.theemanuelshow.com. Check out Mr. Craig Blackmore mm -hmm. online. Also on our YouTube channel, we're gonna have links to his personal information on there. I want you guys to log on. What, look at his look at his art. Understand who he is and understand the concept that he's trying to pass on to you that your emotions aren't everything to you. Pay attention to today and understanding that you're not tied. You don't have to be tied to some of the heaviest things that pull you down. At least that's what I got from the information. Thank you all for watching another episode of my show. I love you all. God bless. You guys have a nice day. Thank you. Nope. Thank you so much for watching another episode of The Emanuel Show. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming next week. I think like church is like a place where basically there's so much positive energy there that the force is there. So like preachers or the congregations, people can heal. If there's enough energy be, being you know extended toward whoever it is, whatever it is, miraculous miracles do happen. And that's how it happens, through the positive energy, the force of the congregation, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, being laid hands on, but you have to watch who puts their hands on you because all energy is not good. I energy. completely understand. And for this episode and many more like it, feel free to log online to www.theemanualshow.com. We also would like for you to follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, tweet us, and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.